It's no secret that we here at Chiang Rai Garrett are not the biggest fans of Breckenridge, but last season I decided to go up to Breck with a friend who is a Breckenridge regular with a completely open mind and see if my previous hate was unwarranted. It was not. My experience was so bad that I'm finally making the video I set out to nearly two full years ago. Here is a hater's guide to Breckenridge. You know, the hallmark of Breck is their lift lines. In fact, Breck is so damn good at creating lift lines that, get this, you'll not only have to wait in line for the gondola to get on the mountain in the morning, but you'll also have to wait in that same line to get off the mountain at the end of the day. There are busy ski resorts everywhere, but that is just a different level of chaos. It's quite mildly impressive. Peak 8 is quite chaotic in itself, and corporate isn't doing it any favors. Why is it that C chair, E chair, 6 chair, the T bar, A chair, and even Beaver Run all need upgrades, but instead Vale is upgrading 7 and 5 and is going to build another gondola on peak 9 before reinforcing their lift infrastructure where it's needed most? Talk about a calamity. <laughs> that sounds like something they would name a run. How stupid. Breckenridge is commonly hailed as one of the most family-friendly ski resorts. One weekday, when it wasn't even busy, it took the two of us a half hour of asking around, roaming, and waiting to find a table at Pioneer Crossing. I can only imagine how ridiculous it would have been for a family of four. And trust me, I'm praying for all y'all if you dare try to eat on mountain on a weekend. The side effect of being considered family friendly is that Breckenridge has a lot more beginners than a resort like Winter Park or even Vale. You know that teaching method where beginners pizza down with their hands in front of them? Only at Breckenridge could you find a bunch of beginners thinking that Lindsay frickin' Vaughn doing that very learning method out of goddamn black. Let me explain. Breckenridge is supposed to be family friendly, but yet it is severely lacking in beginner terrain. Denver is infamous for its 100 car pileups on the 6th Avenue freeway. Breckenridge ought to be infamous for its 100 skier pileups on Imperial Ridge. People skiing way above their ability level is also why the T-Bar is eternally busy. Half of the people have no idea how to ride it. I watched one lady attempt the T-Bar about 5 times before giving up and skiing down to peak 7. I can only imagine what some people would do if they had to ride a detachable platter. If you know, you know. What I don't understand is how a ski resort that is supposed to be family friendly has one of the most uptight and unfriendly atmospheres around. It just doesn't compute. This day I went to Breckenridge was not a busy day. As you've seen, one of the things that I love to hate on at Breck is the crowds, but the day I was there recently did not have very many crowds. So how, then, did I end up waiting in line for the Freedom Super Chair for nearly half an hour? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the wonderful world of liftline anarchy. At most ski resorts, everybody abides by the alternate signs and the line moves along just fine. But no, not at Breckenridge. At Breck, it is every man for himself. The amount of times I saw entire families completely cut in line was absolutely mind-boggling. Another absolutely incredible accomplishment I saw was three separate groups of five skiers try to get on a quad chair just during the one segment I stood in that line. You know what? I've completely forgotten to discuss the terrain. So here's Breckenridge in a nutshell. Peak 10. A bunch of groomed blacks that are icy as all hell and have an overpopulation of beginners over skiing their abilities. Peak 9. A few greens and blues with denser traffic than I-70 and a few tree and mogul runs under each air that have more mud than snow. Peak 8. A total loss. Peak 7. The most boring terrain you'll ever ski, it's just straight groomer on straight groomer with nothing fun. Peak 6. A bunch of people getting overwhelmed by the high alpine environment and a bunch of windswept open tundra. The high alpine terrain. A bunch of boring bowls aside from the lake chutes, but those are busier than the entire rest of the expert terrain combined. Trash snow as a whole. Six chair. The only good tree or mogul runs in the whole of Breckenridge. If you're an advanced skier, you might as well just go to Telluride. And of course, let's not forget all of Breckenridge's numerous catwalks and traverses that you have to take to get literally anywhere. A moment of silence for all of our snowboarders who attempted wanderlust. Gone, but never forgotten. Yeah, Breckenridge has some good things about it. It's all fun and games until you have to park in an abandoned airport. So just keep in mind that if you're looking to spend a buttload of money, and yes, buttload is a legit measurement, 
You might as well spend it at Beaver Creek or Deer Valley or Snow Basin or Sun Valley or Big Sky or Alta or Arizona Snowblow or literally anywhere else. But hey, if you all want to go waste time and money to ski Breck, have at it. Leave the good mountains for me. All my love, I'm out.